Alright, hello everybody. I'm going to be reviewing Buffer Zone, which is like a sandboxy defense wall. It kind of reminds me of both in a way. It kind of does similar things as both of them. Uh, close that. Uh, this is the tutorial. When you install it, it, it shows a little kind of a, a promo kind of tutorial about what it does. It says Buffer Zone is a virtual environment where you can safely download, open, and share any file or application without risk your system. So, sounds like sandboxy, right? Uh, I will mention this is a pay for product, but it's a one time fee. So, when you run internet applications, Buffer Zone automatically loads them inside the virtual environment, keeping your f system safe from internet threats. Alright, that's ex almost exactly like sandboxy. What this does, instead of having a special shortcut to launch via the sandbox or whatever, so Internet Explorer is always going to launch in the sandbox unless you right click and hit open outside of the sandbox. So that's, well, open outside buffer zone. So that's kind of the basic idea. These things will automatically open in buffer zone. So every web browser opens in buffer zone. It has a big list of things that will open in buffer zone. Um, programs running inside buffer zone can never attack your system. It interesting thing is uh, they can only attack programs and files left within the virtual buffer zone itself. So they can't even see the files outside of the buffer zone. And um, so you can stop worrying about data theft, system crashes, whatever. The other interesting thing, um, when you double click to open a download, you'll see that it opens with a red border around its window. You'll also see a buffer zone icon over the side of the icon. That means your download is running inside Buffer Zone. So that's the basic idea. We'll see all this. The other interesting thing Buffer Zone does is it hides certain folders that you want protected from Buffer Zone um, applications. So you can't see my documents unless you add a website exception. So if I want to upload an image from my documents, I would have to add an image exception to Image Shack so that nothing can steal my document's information. That's another thing this can do. Um, an installer, you can, uh, if you download it, it'll be automatically opened inside the buffer zone unless you right click and click Move Outside Buffer Zone. So that's another thing that it can do. Um, you can install programs in the buffer zone and it, they will work, but it's maybe going to be a little bit more annoying. Uh, so it's good if you trust the installer to try it outside. So this just tells you what to do. Um, uh, this is not anything needed. Uh, and then you can empty buffer zone too, which cleans out everything within buffer zone. This tells you about the My Documents, it defines it as confidential, and files in My Documents cannot be read or opened by applications running inside buffer zone and you can add exceptions to that list. So, now are you ready to download, open, and share anything? And so, I'm going to be coming back in a second, and we're going to be taking a look at Buffer Zone and what it does. We're going to be giving it the full test, and we're going to see how it feels. All right, I'll be back then. Alright, so we're going to start by taking a look at, around at the uh, options here in the interface. So it's a pretty simple interface. Uh, if you want more, you just click the arrow, and it will give you more options. Um, it's a little big for my screen here, but we'll make it by there. Uh, they give you a 30-day trial to start. It just shifted to 29 days. Uh, so, let's take a look here. If we look down here, we have Edit Buffer Zone Programs. So this is a list of programs that's automatically going to run in uh, Buffer Zone. So you see you have all your browsers, um, torrent applications. uTorrent is not here, I did notice. Uh, messenger applications, chatting applications, and then DAP. So Download, or Accelerate, Download Accelerator Pro Plus. If you want to add another one, you just click here. Um, I could browse and select uTorrent. 
if I wanted that to be within the uh, the buffer. So, and then if we go and look at uninstall buffer zone programs, it'll show you a list of programs that have been installed in the buffer zone. So if I go and install CCleaner within the buffer zone, the uh, entry on for uninstalling it will be here because it will be installed in the buffer zone. And uh, I believe from here I might be able to move those programs out of the buffer zone too. But there are other ways to do that. Uh, and then you can empty buffer zone. You can choose what you want to do. You can stop the processes. You can delete the buffer zone registry in the virtual files, which is fine. Um, privacy zone. This is for if you're visiting a site, like I gave the image shack um, uh, example earlier. And this is if you go to image shack and you try to browse in my documents, you won't see any of those files unless you click here and add image shack us which is the image shack URL uh, confidential files this is the files it's protecting uh, my documents and outlook mailbox I could go here browse and add anything I wanted so that's great I can do that any way I want uh, you can create a buffer zone snapshot which is a snapshot where you can restore uh, the buffer zone virtual um, uh, the virtual environment to a certain date and state. So you can also view buffer zone activity. You can view the details, and it will show you what it's prevented and stuff like that. So policies. Uh, this is not many settings here or anything, but the application control is kind of a cool idea. Uh, activate, we'll activate this, and we'll have to reboot. Um, but this will basically, if it doesn't recognize a program that is here digitally signed executable files, then it will prop or known executables. You can choose to run inside buffer zone, prompt user, deny execution, or open outside buffer zone. In this case, we're going to do prompt user because that's pretty versatile. And, um, yeah. It's kind of difficult to see here, but I believe there's a save button somewhere down there. Um, I'm going to have trouble getting to that. But I think it does it automatically anyway. Device control, you can control what it does. So let's say you plug in a USB memory. I'm go you can say that anything from that runs in the buffer zone, or you can say it's forbidden or confidential, which means that you can only see it if you have like a password, um, which is fine. Uh, they have it. They do have a firewall. Um, it's kind of limited because it's not automatic. Um, in essence, you have to add the ports that you want to block. So if you have a known bad port. You can block it pretty easily within by adding something. You can block a program. Um, right here, it does have port 25 blocked. Um, you can deny all connections if you want, and you can just change this to block all ports, and nothing gets through, which is fine. So right here, we have a uh, a few more rules and everything so you can have a password if you want buffer zone to uh, not allow you to change settings without a password I'm not worried about that um, you can choose whether to draw a red border around buffer zone programs uh, you can notify about new versions you can choose which drive you want your virtual repository to be on so in this case C is a good choice and if you have multiple partitions you definitely want to choose the partition that the all the programs that you're using are installed on and uh, when a trusted program opens an unknown script or macro you can prompt user that's fine that's all good stuff uh, maintenance you can automatically empty the buffer zone so that's all good stuff so we'll have to see how this does against some malicious links and that'll be a lot of fun I'll be right back in part two.